Well, this is Dr. Kevin Malay. Welcome to another uh, one of our TVM topics. Today's topic is calcium, and I chose what I think is a somewhat fitting uh, setting. I'm in the ossuary that is below the streets of Paris. This is the former quarry for the limestone that was mined to feed the building frenzy uh, in the uh, 16th, 17th, 18th centuries. And eventually, the remains of some six million Parisians were moved down here. And so this is known as the catacombs of Paris. And limestone, as you probably know, is calcium carbonate. And of course, uh, bones are principally calcium, and so I thought this would be a fitting place to talk about calcium. And the first thing I want to simply say about calcium is that it's one of two mistakes that you do not want to make with your patients. The first one being, do not leave your patients dehydrated. And the second is uh, with insufficient calcium. Um, Calcium is central to every physiologic process in the body. Um, all smooth muscle contraction, cardiac muscle contraction, striated muscle contraction is all dependent on calcium. All neurologic uh, function is dependent on calcium. Um, the immune system, the endocrine system, everything requires calcium. You know, we learned early on in TVM that the body considers calcium something other than just a mineral. We have a point here just below the, uh, the clavicle on the right-hand side that is how we assess minerals. But calcium is on the left-hand side above the clavicle. And, <clears throat> you know, Victor Frank... Who, uh, who found a TBM along with uh, Harold Havlick. When I would visit uh, Victor, uh, he would ask that I would bring calcium every time I would come. Uh, my father had a, uh, had a nutritional company that produced calcium that Victor quite liked. And so he would ask me to bring it each time. Well, that was about an hour. Uh, the calcium was about an hour away from me. And so I, I didn't always bring it down, and I was always be reprimanded um, by Dr. Frank for not bringing the calcium. And I would tell him, you can just call and they'll ship it to you for free, but he, he wanted me to bring it. He wanted me to bring one bottle at a time. So I got a little annoyed at that and, uh, and didn't always comply, which I kind of feel bad about now. But those of you that knew Victor knew that he wasn't so great at following his own advice, but when it came to calcium... That was something that he was religious about and very consistent about, and for good reason. I found that calcium is the best, most potent painkiller that I've ever used with my patients. Calcium along with water. Any pain at all, any pain syndrome, um, my first question is, is what's the calcium status along with the water? And truthfully, uh, if you listen to the TVM topic on water, you'll uh, hear me say that I assume every single symptom that my patients have is as a result of underhydration. And I also make the same assumption with calcium until, until my patients actually get enough calcium and that's resolved. I assume whatever they're having going on is, uh, is a result of insufficient calcium. So a couple other things um, that I want to just talk about um, as far as calcium goes. The only two things that I know of that can happen in the body without calcium is death and cancer. It's interesting that cancer cells can actually continue to reproduce and replicate in a calcium deficient environment. Healthy cells cannot. The other thing I want to mention is that the 
um, importance of calcium is really made clear by one, there's a, a complex endocrine mechanism, uh, several mechanisms that are put in place for both the absorption of calcium. It's the only uh, nutrient that I'm aware of that has a hormone um, delivery method, basically absorption method in the gut, and that being vitamin D. And then we have parathormone and calcitonin, which help to regulate the absorption and mobilization of, of, of and storage of calcium in the body. The other thing that uh, is worth mentioning is the role of the kidneys. Um, the kidneys maintain the calcium level in the blood um, to such a degree that calcium levels in the blood basically give you no indication at all what the calcium status is in someone's diet, whether they're getting enough. In order to measure, um, for me clinically, if I'm going to do a lab test, um, I will measure the amount of calcium in the urine. And if if the body has enough calcium, it will then tend to, to spill it out the, um, the kidneys. And that's how we would know. If we measure the calcium level in someone's urine, and there isn't any, then we assume that they're likely deficient. And so so that's that's the marker that we use that. The other thing I want to talk about is a bone and bone storage of calcium. You know, it's something we kind of take for granted that bones are made of calcium, but bones could have been made of other minerals. Calcium is not the most abundant mineral on earth. It's not the most abundant mineral in the human diet. Uh, sodium and phosphorus are more rich and, in the human diet than calcium is. Yet, because of calcium's central role to physiology, it worked for our bones to be built of calcium because it acts as a reservoir, as a reserve. When uh, we develop as fetuses, uh, we take about 30 uh, grams of calcium from our moms and as our bones develop and, and we build that and then the bones actually act as a calcium pool and if we have a, a stretch where we're not ingesting enough calcium that that calcium pool which holds about 150 to 200 milligrams of calcium will be drawn from if that um, is prolonged then what will happen is the body will upregulate its ability to take in, in uh, calcium through the gut, like that happens during pregnancy, like that happens during lactation. And, um, but if that's not enough, if there isn't enough in the gut to be drawn in through that upregulation, then it starts to um, take calcium from the bone matrix. Once it starts to do that, you run the risk of it never being put back. Now, the exception seems to be to that is when that 30 grams is taken from the, um, the pregnant mother, that the calcium gets put back during lactation. That upregulation continues, but the calcium demand isn't quite as high as it is in, um, during pregnancy. And so the calcium in the bones actually gets replenished during that time. But outside of that, uh, the mechanisms don't seem to kick 